Yeah, yeah. Content, bitch, bitch. What's cracking? What's cracking? What's cracking? Welcome to the first episode of Content Bitch. If you know me, you know it should do. Give that do. I've been doing a lot of things, but one thing I have jumped off of was the podcast shit. And I decided to put my hat back into the podcast shit because I actually miss doing it. I used to have a podcast with another artist a couple of years ago. It actually started off really well. It was doing well for a long time. But business, life, you know, those type of things uh, transpired and stopped the podcast. But you do got shit to say. And I see a lot of things that go on in the industry, in the world, uh, in life everyday life i'm a father myself a husband you know what i'm saying so this podcast is gonna be fun man we're gonna talk about what the fuck we want to talk about uh and we're gonna go into one reason why i called it content bitch uh i talked to a couple like label a and r's and shit from the past and all the motherfuckers kept telling me the same thing like bro you got to put your personality out there nobody care about the music they want to see who you are as a person before they even dive into your music so that's what we're going to do. We're going to find a couple subjects. I don't know how often I'm going to do this shit. Once or twice a week. I don't know. It depends. You know, like I said, I'm a father. I got a busy schedule. On top of that, I still like to make music, create music. We're in my studio now. I don't know if we're going to change the location, but this is a pretty, like, comfortable location for me. I can smoke in here. I can drink my liquor in here. The kids don't come down and buy that nigga, so the wife is chilling. So I would think I would take advantage of my time and record it where I'm the most comfortable in my damn studio. <clears throat> but with that being said, I hope that uh, everybody has been taking advantage of the time uh, that y'all have been off. I'm going to call it an off uh, rest and reset period because that's pretty much what it is to me, a rest and reset period. I hope you have taken uh, the time and advantage of this time uh, to learn new things, uh, to grow with your partner or if, if you're in a relationship. Uh, I definitely learned some things about myself during this time. Uh, I learned some things about my wife during this time. Uh, and what we most learned through all this, uh, I can only speak for myself, I guess, uh, is that you are not fucking perfect, motherfucker. Like, uh, you have to be willing to accept other people's opinions. You have to be willing to uh, give people their space when their space is needed. You have to be willing to talk and not just like, you know what I'm saying? Like blow shit over. And yeah, man, this, this is a definitely like, there's people that's been married fucking 50 years, yo. Like 50 years, 30 years in this pandemic. Oh shit, excuse me. In this pandemic have made them look at their significant other in a whole nother light, whether positive or negative. I learned how to cut my kids hair my boys hair so i kind of low-key became a barber i've been learning how to mix and master music uh i'm finally about to get my ass back into gym into the gym the basketball uh courts are opening back up so i'll probably get back on a basketball team soon uh trying to eat better and healthier because those that have known me and have seen me yes your dude has put on so much fucking weight so, you know what? I just came up with the name of this fucking episode. We're going to call this Allow Me to Reintroduce Myself. Because after this first episode, uh, you do about to hit it hard. I think the world going to open back up. I'm praying that the world going to open back up. Uh, it's definitely going to open up for people that's getting vaccinated. I am a firm believer in fuck that fucking vaccination. We can get into that a little bit. Fuck it, we're going to get into it now. I don't fuck with the vaccination. I don't, uh, and before y'all start judging and shit like that, I'm judging the vaccine off of the fact that there has not been enough tests. Not saying that I'm opposed to getting it, but I'm opposed to there not being enough tests for me to get something done. Motherfuckers talking about, yeah, you've been getting the flu shot, but the flu shot has also been around for a long time and has been tested and approved. And we can't believe everything our fucking government tells us. But I definitely don't see a pandemic jumping off. And then the next fucking year, you got the motherfucking cure for it. If that sounds uh, correct to you, then motherfucker, join the zombie apocalypse. Because it's probably a fucking time release chip in that motherfucker that's going to turn you into a goddamn zombie. So, 
just be be careful. I know I got some family members that got that shit, and them motherfuckers is not allowed to visit this house. Not at all. You are will not. You are not welcome in this home because I don't trust it. I don't trust it. I don't trust my kids to get it. I don't trust people that that's so fast, so fast, like so quick to jump on it because you want to get back to your normal life. These motherfuckers is offering y'all a million dollar lottery ticket if you get vaccinated. Do that not sound crazy to y'all? Like that shit sound nutty as fuck to me. So I can't fuck with it. I can't fuck with it. I'm off of that shit. Like that's not my cup of tea, as my granny would say. I ain't fucking with it. What else we got going on in the world, man? We got so much craziness still going on, bro. Even though it's a fucking lockdown, there's still, like, craziness going on. I'm watching homies that been, have been homies since day one fucking fall apart with each other. One of my favorite podcasts that made me want to actually get back into podcasting was the Joe Budden podcast. This dude, and hopefully this... It's kind of hard to, like, uh, jump to conclusions and shit like this, but it seemed like the facts are on the table, in my opinion. One thing is for certain, if it's in the contract that I can read what's in the books, motherfucker, I can read what's in the books. And if you got a problem with me seeing what's in the books, then we got a motherfucking problem. That means you hiding something. Whether you hiding something or not, let me see that, bro. Let me see that. And if we are on a fucking percentage-based contract and not a salary, then I definitely need to see what's coming in so I can make sure that I'm getting what's due to me. That's just business. That got nothing to do with friends. Now, when you take the friend part into consideration, like, nigga, if we built this together, like, they say Rory was there from episode one. Uh, he uploaded it to his SoundCloud. He got the cover art done and shit. So that holds weight, in my opinion. Like, he's been there since day one. So he got a big-ass opinion and uh, thoughts and some say-so in that shit, even though you're the face of the company. Like I told y'all before, man, the face of the company don't mean all the time the fucking boss, man. That's one thing people got to understand, too. The face of the company don't mean boss. That just means you the motherfucking face. You got the most clout or whatever the fuck you want to call it in the whole process. But that don't mean that you the fucking boss. Uh, also, you can be the boss, but don't forget, motherfucker, the Ferrari don't run with all the other little parts moving and working. So if everybody is chipping in to get you to that point, you should be like low key. The boss should be kissing the workers ass. That's how I feel about that. Like you may be the boss. Go find other motherfuckers to replace us. Go do that then. But let's see if that shit going to run just as smoothly as it has been. Let's see if you continue to grow like you have been. You know what I'm saying? So, but I'm also one of the people I have learned over the years as getting older and getting some wisdom throughout the years. I cannot uh, do certain type of business with friends. There's just certain things that I won't, I won't mix my uh, friendship with business anymore because that shit has panned out for me like shit. Like that, oh, excuse me, this beer is going my ass. That shit has done uh more damage than it has done good uh people have forgotten that we started something as friends and wanted to see it grow that's the that's the main part about that when you start something with friends that shit is supposed to remain fun through the whole time once all this business shit comes to get involved and it's big money involved or big opportunities come from it that i just feel like people like they get greedy or they they miss like the whole the whole point of the whole thing you know what i'm saying like where when did this happen when did this transpire from us wanting to be doing something cool fun uh just shooting the shit or whatever the case may be to us like oh now i gotta get my lawyer involved we gotta do this 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 and this and this that's the reason why you cannot do uh business with friends because even if you do that shit your friends cannot separate the the work life from the uh, business side, like when I was in the military, I became a sergeant, staff sergeant. Then I fucking um, became uh, I was a team leader and a squad leader. And I when I became a team leader, uh, I was still cool with what we call our Joes and shit. Like I before then, I was a Joe too. So. I told the motherfuckers at work, bro, I'm your fucking boss. But once we leave this motherfucker and take this uniform off, bro, we about to go to whatever club it is and get it cracking. We about to go drink. We about to go have a good time. You know what I'm saying? We still going to do it. But if you can't separate that shit, then 
we truly ain't friends. You know what I'm saying? So it's like it's a double edged sword, bro. You know what I'm saying? It's a double edged sword. You have to be able to separate the two. And that's very hard for a lot of people. That's very hard for a lot of people. So if you the boss, respect the boss. We still homies, but once the camera's on or whatever your job may be, once we clock in, motherfucker, I'm the boss. That's the case. Once we clock out, it is what it is. We back to getting it. You know what I'm saying? But people cannot separate the two. And in this situation, they said that Joe was not the boss. He was just the face of the company. So you the face of the company, but you're not about to shit on me, homie. Like, that's not. Nah, especially not if I helped you get to this point. If I helped us get to this point, I got some say-so. I got some right to know what's going on. I got rights, motherfuckers, so... That's why I say I can't do this uh, friends and, and business shit no more like that. That that don't work. That don't work for me no more. That simply don't work. I also like uh, Maul's rebuttal. His response to that was uh, respect before anything. Respect before anything. Like, even if you start to uh, move a certain type of way and act a certain type of way and shit, and I recognize that, as your friend and as your homie, I'm going to pull you to the side and tell you that you motherfucking wrong, bro. And we need to fix that situation because you jeopardizing more than this fucking podcast. You know what I'm saying? So, or jeopardizing more than our friendship or jeopardizing more than whatever the case may be. Uh, we need to fix that, homie. If we bros and friends, like you say, we going to have to fix that shit. You know what I'm saying? So, I need to take a chug of the beer. By the way. Y'all see I got the Mindfuck shirt on, Mindfuck Lifted, TPL Vision, Content Bitch. These are all sponsors of Love Ink Tattoos. They're all sponsors of this podcast, and I'm thankful for y'all. By the way, I appreciate y'all. Thankful, for, uh, th Very thankful for y'all. What else we gonna get into? Let's let's look and see. Ah, did y'all watch this shit with, uh, on The Breakfast Club about this fucking uh, D.A.? This fucking DA said, it don't matter if you moving forward, backwards, sideways, uh, st uh, and or stand still in your automobile. You are considered a threat if you're black. If you're black, you are considered a threat. If you are inside of a vehicle, if it's moving or not, that is justified for them to kill you. And this motherfucker said the court will see it as justifiable to kill you. Will it ever be safe for you to be black in America? Like, legit question. Will it ever be safe for you to be a human being in America? Because this thing, like, them motherfuckers don't even look at us like human beings, yo. You can literally not be a fucking human in America. And that's fucking scary, yo. That's fucking scary. You cannot... I have this conversation with my wife all the time about uh, moving back to America. For y'all that don't know, I live in Germany. I live in Europe. And we had this conversation. We actually just had this conversation today about uh, living in America. And I told her, I'm not raising my kids in America. Like, I refuse to, and you can call it scared. You can say whatever the fuck you want to. But I like the fact that I don't have to look, look uh, live looking over my shoulder here in this country. Nobody fuck with me here. You know what I'm saying? Everybody say, hello, schönen Tag, guten Abend, guten Morgen. Like, everybody chilling. They going their way. You don't fuck with them. They don't fuck with you. And I like having this peace, man. I like having this peace knowing that I can send my kids down to the to the park and have a good time with their friends and not stress. I'm not saying that it's uh, peachy everywhere. And I'm fortunate to live in a nice neighborhood. But I also, your kid can be, you see... Yo, your kid can really be at the park in America playing cops and robbers with fake guns. Somebody going to call the police on them, and the cop going to come kill this little kid for having a good time, bro. Like, that's... I don't want my kids to have to... I don't even want to... The fact that you have to teach your kids to watch the type of fun that they have, that's fucking ridiculous. That's really ridiculous. And I don't think that I can live... Uh, in a world like that, man, like I don't, I don't, uh, or in a country like that, I don't, I, I don't like it, man, and I cannot, and I, I, that breaks my heart, 
to even sit up there and try to think about or process that I may have to tell my kids this. Like, yo, bro, when you go there, if you see a cop, don't stare at him. Uh, if he tell you to stop, stop. Don't say nothing. Put your hands up. Like, this, we talking about kids now. Now, mind you, adults, <laughs> a black man or a black woman in America, you like... I watched him kill a fucking man in front of his wife and kids on live, yo. On live. On fucking live. On live. These crackers don't give a fuck about you. And before we go any further, I'm going to explain to y'all the term cracker because I get I get uh, a little bit of slack for this word. This word cracker is meaning like the person that cracked the whip, right? So if you know anything about this times, it's about the whip being cracked. Your boss can be a fucking cracker, meaning black, Hispanic, white, it don't matter. Anybody that fucking look at you like you are less than them, that is a fucking cracker to me. That's a person that think they can whoop you and whip you into shape and make you conform to their beliefs or their way of movement. That's a cracker to me. So when I say cracker, I don't think I'm just talking about fucking white people. I'm talking about every fucking body. I had some fucking cracker black dudes in the fucking army. So, yeah. So before we go any further, before you get all in your goddamn feelings and emotions, just know where I'm coming from with that shit. But yeah, man, I, I and I got biracial children, so that's the other side to that. And we all know how fucking biracial people are treated <laughs> in fucking America, bro. That's like... It's so mind-boggling to me how, like, how racism is still, like, a thing, yo. Like, it's puzzling. It's fucking puzzling, man. Like, it's really puzzling how racism is a thing. I, like I told my wife yesterday, we was watching some uh, Love, Simon, this film Love, Simon on Netflix. And I, like, with no malice, I said, yo... The LGBT, uh, LGBTQ community is going to be considered uh, more human, get more human rights than a black person in America. Like, really think about that. Like, you uh, as a gay, trans, whatever, like, everyone should be respected equally across the board. But the fact that, let's say, it became commercialized over the last five or ten years, from my view. It has been, it has became a commercialized thing, and people have spoken out, stood up for uh, for gay and trans gender people, and it became like a law. If you fuck with them, you are gonna get punished. It has happened for the Asian community as far as this year but the people that have built the countries on their back black people they still the Emmett Till bill has still not passed like that bro my people have for over 400 years have been asking for equal rights have been asked to be treated as an equal human being but we are what considered three-fifths of a man right this is like, like, if that don't fuck with you, then something, fuck what race you are, fuck what religion you are. But if you are a human being that has lived in America or has grown up in America, that should be bothering you. That really should be bothering you. A loose cigarette can get you killed. Uh, playing with a toy gun can get you killed. Being at a train station uh, can get you killed. Uh, being pulled over for a broken taillight can get you killed. Being asleep in your home next to your fiance can get you killed. Being black, period, can get you killed. And that's like, I, my, I can't wrap my, I still can't wrap my brain around that shit, yo. I really, I still cannot wrap my brain around that shit. And I tried, uh, luckily for me, I'm fortunate that my parents raised me, oh, excuse me, in California, the, one of the most diverse states in all of America. I see Asian people with black people. I see Latinos with Asians. I see Arabic people with uh, black people. I, I like 
though, it's it's diverse. It's diverse. It's diverse. And I love being able to see that. Because when I moved to St. Louis, I finally, like, seen what racism was. You know what I'm saying? Like, living in the city. I went from living in the county, and then my parents kind of split and shit. Then we, my mom and us and my sisters, we moved down to the city. And that was such a fucking night and day from living in the county to living in the city, yo. That was such, like, a major flip. The county people got their nose up on the city people. City people looking like, fuck these crackers in the county and shit. And you never, it's, it's, you never really get it until you sit back and reflect. You know what I'm saying? You got to kind of process shit. Sometimes it takes time to process shit. And that, it took me a little bit of time to process the whole thing. And man, like I said, I was 12 years old when we moved to St. Louis. And I, I did not want to leave California to begin with because I was leaving all my friends and shit. But then when I got to St. Louis, I'm like, yo, first off, we're like, I was one, I was one of the black dudes. My teacher asked me to stand up in class my first day. I was at Kirby Middle School in the county, like uh, in Hazel, Hazelwood East County. And my teacher told me to stand up, introduce yourself. I'm like, yeah, I'm Kevin. I'm from, uh, from California, blah, blah, blah. First off, I remember this shit vividly. This girl named China. A black girl asked me, yeah, do y'all have the same type of money in America, uh, in California? I'm like, and I didn't know if that bitch was serious or not. And I said, yeah, this is America. And this bitch called me a snob because I answered her question, which I thought was like a fucking no-brainer. But that's neither, neither here or there. That got nothing to do with nothing. Anyway, uh, but I told her I'm from California. These motherfuckers told me that I talk white. And then that's when it clicked in my head. I said, where are all the fucking white people at in this classroom? I was in a school full of all black kids, which was cool. Like, I don't, I don't give a fuck about that. Uh, but there was one white kid in this whole damn school. And the irony of this whole, whole story is when I, uh, uh, this kid, I could see in his face that it was hard for him and his sister. Cause his sister went to the, uh, to the, the elementary school with my sister. And I can see that it was hard for him to adjust to this like this was a new situation for him because this kid was from west virginia so he went from being to a school where there was all white people to being in school where it was all black and he and he's the only white dude and then when i moved back to california i went to uh west valley high school uh and there was not so many black people at this high school so it was kind of like a, a flip-flop so i went from being uh like culturally um sound like knowing all these different type of cultures and being around all these different type of people to having like a five year break of that shit by living in St. Louis and only being around uh, black folks. Then going back to California and having a culture shock. That was weird as fuck. Like, okay, like this is. And at the end of the day, I'd much rather be in California because I'd much rather be around diverse uh, people. Not to say that there's not racism in California, but I will be honest with you, I never experienced it while I was there. And I lived in some of the roughest parts. The only place that I ever experienced uh, uh, racism was with fucking 12. So fuck them niggas. But other than that, I never, I cannot sit up here and lie to you and say that I ever experienced racism in California. Even though I know that shit exists, because, like I said, the police, no motherfuckers was, ugh. But, yeah, that's, ah. You want to know another way you can get arrested or pulled over? It's being, uh, you know, you know, I had a conversation with a fucking squad leader, right? When I first joined the military. First off, this nigga told me I will, I can become a sergeant major just because I'm black and it's uh, affirmative action. Not because of my skill set, nothing. He said, you will probably, I told him one day I'm going to be the sergeant major of the army. And the first say, oh, but that's definitely probably going to happen for you. And it has nothing to do with your school, uh, your skill set. It has everything to do with affirmative action. This motherfucker really t told me that in my face. And if I wasn't a snot-nosed private at the time and didn't know no better, man, bro, don't, don't even get me, don't even get me started. But let's talk about the lieutenant that got pulled over in his vehicle and he was black, man. They, this, this, so you can't even defend your country. And I said this about the squad leader to say this. One, the squad leader asked me why black more black people don't join the military. 
and even then at this time as a snot nose uh private 19 20 years old i told we don't get no respect and no fucking job we do it don't matter so do you think people want to come fight for a country that don't even give them no fucking respect i had to fucking join the military because they was about to lock my stupid ass up that's the reason why i joined the fucking military that was not by fucking choice i'll be very honest with you that was not by choice it just so happened that i got in there and i liked it and i stayed longer until I figured out what I want to do in my fucking life. But other than that, that was not a motherfucking choice. So if anybody tell you otherwise, they fucking lying to you. That was not a choice for me to join. Because even in the military, I was part of the fucking infantry. I was an infantry soldier. So this is like supposed to be like a good old boy club here. You you a hard-nosed dick. That's what they call your hard-nosed dick uh, as an infantry man. And it's supposed to be respect all the way around. Uh, no matter what your color was. But I can tell you, man, some of the, I, I, what I did was I leveled up with rank. I said, okay, motherfucker, you want to talk shit, I, give, me, give me the time to level up, and I will get right back with you, homie. I will get right back with you. And that's what ended up happening. I leveled up and to where the motherfuckers can talk shit, and I told every other minority soldier, you have problems, you come holler at me. You ask any soldier, though, that ever worked up under me or, or have it ever uh bumped into me along the way they will always tell you i've been solid i always been fair with everybody and no matter what color you was but the level field the field uh the playing field had to be leveled some way and i ain't gonna sit up here and say like i was some big ass rank or something like that but i made my presence fucking known and i made sure that i was doing the right thing uh no matter who you were male female black white hispanic or whatever like i made sure that whatever was done around me was going to be fucking correct and that's that's the problem with like the world right now especially with uh policing and politics the people get into a position and then they don't make sure whatever is going on around them is solid how many times have y'all watched uh someone getting pulled over and the fucking rookie cop or whoever the other cop the, the backup cop is there with them don't say nothing in fear of maybe themselves uh, being fired or because uh, there is this shit called the good old boys club that that's that's in every fucking like political job or government job there is this shit called the good old boy club and if you fuck around and fuck over the good old boy club you will be ousted so i kind of i understand where uh the cop that don't want to say nothing why he don't say nothing but it's not a fucking excuse doing the right thing is above yourself at the end of the day whether good or bad doing the right thing is above yourself and that's that's the problem with the fucking world and everybody want an incentive for being good everybody want a, a reward for fucking being good instead of just being solid sticking up for what's right and what's wrong and just being a human man at the end of the day people just no one is like that and the world is becoming more and more numb and i think that's what they try to do by these killings by what's going on by these riots i watch this shit and say another one like that that and that's the end of it and I, that's why i don't watch tv no more my ass might watch netflix or watch basketball if i can and basketball come on out here at three o'clock in the fucking morning so i'm not staying up that fucking late so i try to catch what i can but I, I will see shit on Facebook or Instagram or Twitter, and then I go do my own research about it. Then I read that shit. I'm like, ah, oh, nope. I'm not about to waste my good energy that's being bestowed upon me right now with that negative shit. Like, I can't read it. That's why when people ask me, what what you think about this? What, this happened? No, nah, I didn't know that happened, man. I'm more into the entertainment shit because I like to be entertained. I can't be watch. It's so much negative going on in the world. I can't watch that shit all day, and I don't see how y'all do it. I don't see how y'all do it. This, another school shooting, another fucking police killing, another riot, another fucking this in this country, a fucking Korea shoot off rockets over here. This person did this over here. Man, I'd rather watch the dumb shit, and, uh, to be honest with you, because at least I'm going to get a laugh out of that shit. I watch this shit on the news and nigga get depressed, bro. Like, depressed. We It's already bad enough niggas is trapped in they fucking house right now. So I can't, honestly, I can't watch that shit that y'all be watching, man. I, I get my news from some of y'all, uh, and then I go on and do a little bit of research myself to see if it's going to affect me or my family. If it don't, I'll fucking keep it moving, man. I keep it moving because, no, sir, I won't let y'all fuck up my inner peace or my peace. Fuck that shit. 
Uh -uh. I gotta get a sponsorship from this beer. Cause when I say that shit is on point, that shit is on fucking point. I swear to you. I guess I kind of want to do this episode as a test episode. Uh, I think I will have more guests on here for sure. I got to figure out like how I want to do this shit. Like, do I want to do it as a uh, a live stream podcast? Do I want? I I'm definitely gonna end up putting this shit like on Spotify and Apple Music. I just got to figure out who, what distributor I want to go to and shit. But as of now, we're just gonna be uploading this on YouTube and on SoundCloud and shit like this. Because, like I said, this shit is just fun for me. It gives me an opportunity to ramble and talk to y'all. Uh, I suggest that y'all click subscribe, uh, like, tell y'all friends. Tell people if they want to come on and chat and debate. They are more than welcome to chat and debate. Like I said, I would do this shit on Zoom. Uh, the Zoom chat. I think I'm going to end up setting up a green screen. Right now, like I said, we in my studio and shit. Uh, the sound quality is pretty good in here. So I'm like far from the mic right now and it's picking up everything. So I, I will have my wife as a guest sometime because she be talking shit. Yo. So that, that's, those are, would be fun episodes and shit. I got the homies from the camp. Uh, I'm on this app called Station Head. Artists, check out Station Head, especially if you're an independent artist and you're on a rise right now. You need to check out Station Head. Like... Uh, there's so many, uh, it's like a radio station, right? It is a radio station and podcast that you can do your shit on there. And, uh, what you do is it's connected to Spotify and Apple music. So if there's 30 people on a station or 10 people on a station or a hundred people on a station, when they play your music, that's a hundred streams or 30 streams or 10 streams. However many people are in this room, that's how many streams you are getting at one time. So I suggest, uh, you check it out. I will put all that information in my descriptions at the bottom, uh, along with where to find me at on IG, all that good shit, man. But definitely, definitely, definitely check out fucking uh, Station Head. Check out your dude uh, on YouTube. Follow me on Spotify, Apple Music. Um, I'm releasing like a song a week lately, so good shit too. Uh, Numbers have been up this year. I guess y'all got some fucking time, so y'all been finally listening to your dude and shit. Uh, but yeah, man, I want y'all to stay safe. I appreciate y'all tuning into the first episode. This was just a rambling episode to reintroduce myself, to let y'all know who I am. I know I've been gone for a little while. A lot of people have actually written me and told me to get back on the podcast shit because they enjoy hearing me talk bullshit sometimes. <laughs> so I appreciate y'all that reached out. I'm definitely going to be setting up the show. I will have a schedule for y'all. Uh, like I said, I'm a family man. So, you know what I'm saying? Whenever I get a chance to come down here and do it, I will do it. Uh, but yeah, man. Tune in. Subscribe to the channel. Follow your dude on all social media platforms. Shout out to all the sponsors. And I will see y'all asses next time. Peace. Be safe out here. Yeah, yeah. Content, bitch. Yeah, yeah. Content, bitch, bitch.